Scoop, you're going to go out. Where is the door handle? This is David's party trick, clearly. It's been in the Fast and the Furious movie. Leo V6 engine in the back. I can own a part of that. Um, and yeah, I, I just love it. It's great. Okay, so you're out on the road again with us. Petrol hedonism, me and Scoot. And today we're checking out the car crowd. You would have seen them at events all summer and they're at Petrol Hedonism Live. And you're thinking, what is that? So if you did get a chance to speak to him, found out a bit more, but it's an investment platform into classic cars. We're gonna catch up with David and find out a little bit more about how it works. But right now, we're gonna go and see the collection of cars. You can see that cheeky RS500 right behind me right now. Let's go. David, so excited to be here. Thanks, I love what's behind us. Just quickly, before we yep. get into one about the whole platform and everything else, what have we got? Well, some I, I love them. They've got something for everybody, something for all different places. So uh, we've got the 1980s, at the uh, Sierra Cosworth there, uh, 40,000 miles, just two owners from new, absolutely immaculate. Um, the Clio V6, this is, I guess, the I think the future Escort Cosworth. So obviously a 2003 car, a bit more modern than the Cosy, but again, crazy recipe with the V6 engine in the back. Uh, I don't think ever to be repeated, uh, and we're lucky enough to have a nice, almost immaculate phase one uh, V6 Clio there. Moving around into sort of supercar-y territory, um, we've got the 21,000 mile from new Ferrari, two owners, both Ferrari owners club. That car's been so pampered, it used to live next door to a detailer who'd detail it every time after it came back. Uh, and then once detailed, put away with a steering wheel cover, seat covers, and the car cover on wow. it in a garage. So Amazing. that's never seen a drop of rain in its life. Absolutely immaculate. And Scoot's camera is literally just fixed on that spiker. And then this is, I guess, well, I don't know whether it's everyone's favorite, but it's certainly the one I think that gets the most attention. Uh, this is the Dutch supercar, uh, the Spiker C8 Spider. There's only eight uh, right-hand drive spiders um, in, in the world. This is one of one in jet black with the uh, Goodwood green interior. So a very rare car. Um, 13,000 miles from new. It's had a, an amazing life. It's been owned by um, a guy who owns the uh, LA Supercar Rooms now. Wow. Uh, well, Supercar Rooms, sorry. And uh, also, it's been in the London Motor Museum. It's been in the Fast and the Furious movie. Um, it really has done some amazing things. All right, we're going to find out a little bit more about the platform, how it works. But right now, the Spiker's running because, Scoot, you're going to go out and tell us how it is to ride in the Spiker. So, David, we'll yep. catch up in a See minute. See in a Have bit. a good drive. Right, so before I go out in the C8 Spider, I'm trying to work out where is the door handle? Now, there's me thinking I'm being silly, but I cannot see a handle at all. I mean, I thought it would be here, because I can kind of see maybe fingerprints, but I think I'm wrong. I have absolutely no idea, apart from if I was to climb over. I'm baffled. Chiro, you got any, any idea? No, and this is David's party trick, clearly, because he said, can you get in the supercar? <laughs> Does he know how to open the door? So, the I was going to twist the uh, petrol cap, or maybe. No, that's gun. the actual petrol <laughs> cap. It is a petrol cap. It's, I am so confused. Either. I thought it'd maybe be a push. No, go on. Right, so yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's the best security feature of the Spyker is that no one knows where the door handle is. Oh, Just like similar to a TBR. There's a tiny little button the crown there, isn't yeah. it? The the TBR does the yeah. Yeah. So you've got to click and then lift. So, as you can see, I'm finally sat in the car and as you could probably tell by the interior, it is just amazing. But if I go to David now, you just tell me a little bit more about the interior and how you know incredible it is. Yeah, it, it's, it is pretty much, I think, most, the most awesome interiors of any supercar I've ever been in as well. Um, I mean, Spiker was originally in uh, the aerospace game. They used to make planes during World War II, so a lot of the stuff you'll see on here, like the propeller steering wheel, the accents around the, uh, the, the vents here, they're all sort of giving back to that heritage, I guess, of where it was uh, back in the airplanes. And then you've got things like the open gear linkage. Yes. This, yeah. obviously, a lot of people think that it's sequential, but mm -hmm. it's not. You know, you still have to go over uh, left and right in terms of the changing the gears. Uh, you've got the sort of airplane switches, and the bet that I love the best is the uh, oh, yes. Air Force style switch. That is awesome. Gears I didn't for see the start that, yeah. Stop, just like you get on a fighter jet. That is sick. Uh, but they don't make them that kind of steering wheel, do they now? No, this is uh, so this is chassis number 36. Uh, I think the first 40 so or so spikers had this uh, propeller steering wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason that then only the first few cars had it is because they had to change due to the airbag regulations and they tapped up uh, Lotus and so Lotus Engineering gave them an airbag one, which is it's just like a normal steering yeah. wheel. So having this, obviously, from a safety perspective, not quite so good, but from a exclusivity. But to be fair, if we crashed and that was to your face, I wouldn't mind it because we're in such a cool car. What, so what, nice, way what a way to go out as well. Yeah. But one more thing I want to say, yeah. and like I can say, this interior is stunning, the green. 
How cool is it? I mean, what do you think of it? Love it. Yeah, this is this is the uh, the only one of one uh, with Goodwood green interior and the jet black exterior. Uh, obviously, I think the subtlety of the green it, it's actually sets it off the car perfectly. Um, and yeah, I, I just love it. It's great. So off we go just up the road, and the funny thing is the handbrake is where I'm sat as well, which is quite funny. But even just experience this car for a little bit, you know, it is so so unique. And listen to that sound. And I'm right saying so this is a 4.2 litre yeah, Audi V8. 4.2 litre Audi V8. Yeah. I'll just go down to the end of the road. Very cool. We're 400 horsepower. Um, rear wheel drive, obviously. And about 1,200 kilos curb weight. So actually slightly quicker than an Audi R8. Yeah. Uh, but the good news about it is it is serviceable at Audi dealerships because most of the drivetrain is obviously made by Audi. So um, it's actually, I mean, for a supercar, it's never practical, but. As supercars go, this one's actually a fairly practical supercar as well. And of course you get the looks everywhere you go. <laughs> I can imagine the looks must be ridiculous in this car. Yeah, it's definitely not your normal looking like supercar. That's uh, why I love it so much though, because it is just so special and so different. Yeah, I mean that's actually, I mean we, we've obviously, you can park any Lamborghini, Ferrari, whatever, uh, but when we've been going to the shows and things, parking this biker up, it's the one that gets the most attention. You know, people are literally traveling hundreds of miles to come and see a spiker because they haven't seen one before. Uh, we even had a guy come over from Holland, uh, especially to the British Motor Show, to come and see the car and take some photos with and the It's sun. funny you say Holland because this is where it's from, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's Dutch, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so from Holland, yeah. I think it's the only supercar ever made out of Holland, as far as I'm aware. Um, and I think they did a pretty damn good job. Feel the noise. wakes people up. <laughs> right. So we're now back at the car crowd haven and uh, David's taken you, Scoot, out in the spiker, which I can see by the smile of face you loved it. You had a great <laughs> time. But I want to get down to the nitty gritty about what is behind the car crowd. We've spoken a bit about it. Yeah. I have drilled David on how it all works <laughs> and I love it. So that's kind of me saying, yeah, I endorse it. But how you say this car, I can invest in it. How does that work? Well, so essentially the car crowd is a, is a platform, a technology platform where we allow people to join together to buy awesome cars. So prestige cars, classic cars, we allow people to group together. We take care of all the regulatory bits, all the legal stuff uh, to give everyone peace of mind and confidence. But it's like, it's really about like-minded people coming together to own a car that they absolutely love. An authorised representative of Kessian Capital Limited, who are regulated right. by the FCA. So that gives, you know, consumer protection uh, in terms of, of, you know, we have to comply to all the U latest UK crowdfunding rules, etc. Right. You know, we have to handle money in a certain way, those sorts of things. We do anti-money laundering checks, all that. So yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a regulated investment product, yeah. Wicked, right. So this car here, how much for me to invest in it? So this car here, so all of our cars, is, it all happens in the same way. So the car is its own limited company. So if you were to go onto company's house now, you'd see S-I-E-C-O-S, -S, Sierra Cos, 01 Limited. Um, and we set up a thousand real equity shares within that car. Wow. So you have a chance to buy one share for £59 or up to 10% of the vehicle, which is 100 shares, right. which would be uh, £5,900. So effectively what that means is the valuation we've put on this Sierra Cosworth is 59,000. So if I buy 10 shares in this, it's going to cost me... 590 quid. 590 pounds, I yeah. own 10 shares. That car in, let's say, three years time, I think you explained to me that the whole AGM, they vote to sell the car, yeah. sell it in at however much and profit there, I get my share back. That's exactly right, yeah. And then the, 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 the premise, I guess, is that we wanted to make sure the shareholders, you know, you guys feel like you're in control of your own investment. So unlike a classic car fund, which you might have seen out there, where, you know, you buy into the fund at, say, £10,000, and then somebody else chooses the cars, you don't know what cars they've bought, and at some time later, hopefully, you get some money back. With us, it's about you having, as an individual, the chance to curate your own classic car collection. So you can have, you know, £500 in that car, £200, in that car, 300 pounds in that car, and you build up, you know, a small percentage in each one of the cars to feel like it's your own collection. And as a shareholder, you then vote when to sell the car. So every six months, we give you the chance to say if you want to keep the car or sell the car as an audience, a group of shareholders. With an idea of what it might be. Absolutely, we give okay. you a latest market valuation. We do a little market report um, to sort of give you an indication of whether we're still on the up or whether we think we might be going on the down. But collectively, the decision really is up to you guys to say, yep, yeah, I think it's the right time, let's sell. Uh, and then we arrange that sale, sell, sell for you. This is a dream come true for Petroids because my mind's thinking, I can own a part of that, I can own a part of that. 
all that and it goes up in value. I don't have to look after it, it's stored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can't, do I don't get to drive it, understandably, because you don't want to put any miles in it because it is an investment. Yeah. But you are creating a community, aren't you? Because with this premise and your new premises that yeah. are coming along, people can come along, see the cars, immerse themselves in that. Yeah, that's exactly Cafe it. kind of car style environment. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's like, like your shows, you know, where we came to there and you see loads of people getting together and experiencing and enjoying those cars. That's that's what, you know, this is about really. It's about, you know, seeing Spiker C8s that you don't get to see very often. Yeah. But actually now you can come up here, have a coffee and see it whenever you want. Otherwise it's stuck in some other guy's underground car park somewhere and nobody ever gets to see it. So although you don't get to drive the cars, you know, there is still a bit of enjoyment and experience to be had. And we think it's one of the only options really if you're investing in something where you can actually come and see, touch and feel your investment. Um, you know, even if you were investing in property, you don't get to live in the house. So we've got the three door RS Cosworth. We've got the Clio V6 engine in the back. Mental. You've got the Spyker. You've got the 360 Ferrari. There's a Mini Cooper. Mini Cooper. In. Yeah, it's the 2003 JCW J. John Cooper Works factory fitted kit on that certificate. It's all original. 35,000 mile one owner that yeah. we've got coming in. That's coming online in about two weeks' time. Wow. Um, and then we're looking for Evo sixes, Honda S 2000s. We've got Audi R8 manuals, Lamborghini Gallardo 996 C4S. We've got quite a lot of stuff coming onto the platform. Over yeah. The how months. do you earmark those cars? Um, popularity, really, everyone votes, really, and, right. and gets to say. We've got a little section on our website where people can tell us what the next car they want to see on the platform is. Right. Uh, we then check that out. If it makes the right investment story, if we can find, obviously, and source the right car for it, then you know we'll look to try and buy one of those. Um, obviously, we're also um, you know, reading and researching all the time about what the next trend is. One of the reasons, for example, we bought the Clio V6 was you know it's a crazy one-off Renault, never going to be repeated. Yeah, absolutely. And look at prices of like Escort Cosworths now, which yeah. are going through the roof, and we think this is going to follow that sort of trend because it's that same kind of iconic post the car of the 19, 20 year old lad, yeah. but just 20 years later. So it's got a lot of appreciation left to do. So we sort of vet, make sure that the, the, the investment case stacks up and then yeah, we'll go out and try and find the best one for the investors. Yeah, and back to my FSA background, it's any investment can go up and down, your money is at risk, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely, but yeah, yeah. Is at risk, yeah. check out the platform, the car crowd on Instagram, on websites, and just have a look behind it and speak to David. You've probably seen him at shows 2021. You've been everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, <laughs> any, we're at NEC on the 13th of, um, 13th, I think the 13th, 14th of this month as well. So yeah. we'll have a stand there next to Lancaster Insurance in the main hall. So yeah, come and see us. It's the Car Crowd UK on Insta, Car Crowd UK on Twitter, and the carcrowd.co.uk is the website. Wicked. Thanks for showing us around. This is oh, awesome. My pleasure, man. Thanks very <laughs> much. Cheers. Thanks, guys.